Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Conversations in Community. I have a very special guest, somebody, <laughs> he's already disagreeing with me. Fake news. Yeah. <laughs> Good way to start it. Mr. Chris Harapsky. I used to work with him at CARE 11. He is a uh, the weekend anchor at CARE 11, also during the week special projects reporter. Am I describing that correctly? Yep, that's right. Yep. One of the best in the business, truly. He's, he's very good at what he does. And uh, what caught my attention about six months ago, he did a, a piece on fake news. It was so good, and I wanted to talk to him about it because right now, that is, I think, one of the, if not the most important issues that we're dealing with, because to me, it's like the scaffolding of everything else. If we don't understand basic information, we can't solve all the other big problems of this country without just having a basic understanding of the facts. Yeah, man, I think it, it, it can't be overstated. I think, honestly, it's one of the greatest threats to democracy that we face. And I mean that. And we're seeing the fruits of it right now because if, if you have an electorate that doesn't know what to believe, it doesn't even know what's true, then you have chaos and dissent and deceit and it's all downhill. So we need to empower people to find sources that they trust and respect, that do journalistic work and have integrity. And then if people don't even trust that, they need to have tools to do their own journalism. And the internet now has so many ways that you can find out truth from, from fiction if you're willing to put in a little effort. Yeah. I mean, now more than ever, are you able to actually access this, if, this information? It's a double-edged sword, of course. But So let's talk, let's talk about f fake news because I think a lot of people – have a misunderstanding or use fake news. There are some politicians and people who use fake news because they disagree with this story. That's they don't like a, it. Yeah, that's a whole nother topic we're not even going to get into right now. Yeah. What is the definition of fake news? I would say fake news as a term uh, in the journalism world is a false or fabricated story. It doesn't have identifiable sources. It doesn't have provable facts. It doesn't have quotes. And it's either meant to deceive or it can be interpreted uh, in a false way. That's what I think. Sometimes yeah. it can be, so Jay, I mean, sometimes it can simply be clickbait, right? Mm -hmm. You can scroll to the bottom of any legitimate website and you can see all those advertisements. Yeah. That's fake news too. It's just designed to make you click on something. It's a wild headline or a wild picture. You go to YouTube and you see like cover pictures that say Mike Tyson revenges Muhammad Ali. And it's a picture of Mike Tyson and George Foreman in the ring punching each other. They never fought each other. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's fake news. That's clickbait. But I think more importantly and more oftenly, uh, it's meant uh, as propaganda or it's mm -hmm. meant as disinformation or misinformation. It's intended to harm. And misinformation and disinformation similar but not the same no um misinformation is something it's, it's a different category right it's like bad and then really bad i guess <laughs> yeah. misinformation is like a real story that's taken out of context or bent one way uh, or used to deceive uh disinformation is completely fraudulent right it is a hundred percent fake or fabricated and I'll give you some examples in a little bit, but both are used often. And I think people yeah. will be shocked to know how often these tactics are used today. So if, if you've been paying attention, of course, Facebook, you name it, especially now, we are being inundated with this sort of stuff. Yeah, how don't even big know of that. a problem is this? It's huge. Like I said, I think it's one of the greatest threats to our Republican democracy, right? Like, just get, take this number. Facebook disabled 5.4 billion fake accounts in nine months last year. That's the planet, right? That's the, almost the population of the planet. That's how many fake accounts they, they, they say they've disabled, right? Get this. Okay, so if you want to know how big this is, I did a, a story on a report for a Senate Intelligence Committee. And 
basically they looked at indictments, uh, the Senate report itself, et cetera, looking at how the Russian government paid for and sort of infiltrated our electorate, right? This is not fake news. This has been proven in many ways through indictments, federal indictments. Mm -hmm. Russia paid about $12.5 million, according to these reports. That's it. $12.5 million from, the, from their budget. And they started this thing called the Internet Research Agency. And it's a propaganda arm that's in Russia that was just designed to attack America, to sow uh, discontent, deceit, confusion, and support for President Trump, frankly. And so what happened? They produced... Uh, like they produced so many social media posts that there were 300 million engagements just from their posts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's almost the population of, of the United States. But it's how they did it, Jay, that's even crazier. So like, according to all these reports, and like, here's what they did. And this is what's really okay. scary. They set up thousands of Facebook pages, Instagram pages, and Twitter pages, all of them disinformation, all of them fake. And the names of those pages are like Blackstagram or like uh, Born Liberal or Pray for Police or some religious message. Basically, every page they set up was designed and aimed at a group who believes strongly in something. And for years, they would post positive uh, posts to reflect those things, right? Like yeah. pro-black business or Pro Jesus or, or whatever. It just all these yeah. things to reinforce you to get you sucked into a page. And then as the election drew nearer, you would start to see propaganda posts like this is why you should vote for President Trump, or this is why you should vote for Jill Stein, or this is why you shouldn't vote for Hillary, or this is or they'd they'd so um, uh, disinformation on the election, right? Like where you can get ballots and where you can't, and when the election is actually what day it is. Yeah. And so they it's almost like um, we refer to it in our story as like a um, like a child sexual predator, right? Like grooming people. They groom you with trust. And then when it comes closer to the election, now that you like that page or you follow that page, all of a sudden they start slipping in these subliminal messages about politics and maybe which way you should lean. And it's unclear how effective it is, but it reached a ton of people, a ton of people. Well, it's a, a, you make a good point. We don't know how impactful this is but i mean it's hard to deny at least some of the impact because i see it in my own feed and i see it being shared by some of my friends who who are very smart people and it goes like you said goes into like it's this emotional thing they're that they tap into they're very good at it so that was between 2014 and 2017 and we essentially caught them doing that afterward yeah and they're doing it again right now. We just don't know to what, to what, uh, how far, because you know the top secret intelligence reports. That are well, I mean, the CIA just came out a few days ago, uh, not really delving into a lot of the specifics, but at the very least, saying, "Hey, it's happening again." Right. Um, and to be a, you know, pay attention to it. Right. Right. So no, it's, yeah, it's wild. Next time on Conversations in Community, you want to beware of headlines because no reputable journalistic source is going to start painting headlines that immediately drive you to emotion or say outrageous things. 